You're listening to The Upland Rookie, a podcast presented by Upland Brits. What is up, rookies and veterans? Don't worry. I didn't forget about all you pros out there who've been doing this way longer than me. Uh, Welcome to the Upland Rookie Podcast. I'm your host, Will Larson. And as always, this is presented by Upland Brits. Check us out on Instagram at Upland underscore Brits or at the Upland Rookie Podcast. Well, I think this might be a never before heard style episode in the Upland community. Maybe. Quote me if I'm wrong, or correct me if I'm wrong. But I am sitting down with a spouse of an upland hunter. Yes, my wife. Kirsten joins me on this bonus episode of the Upland Rookie Podcast, and we get to kind of peek behind the curtain a little bit of what it's like to be a spouse of an upland hunter and a bird dog lover. So sit back, enjoy the episode. We're going to have some fun. And we get to ask Kirsten some fun questions on even some hunting terms. Does she know what this means and and all that? Um, We have a lot of fun. Fair warning, she's not a hunter. Um, She never will be, and I am totally okay with that. Um, Our our relationship works really great (laughs) the way it is right now. So um, this is just a really fun episode, and I'm really thankful. Uh, We were able to carve out a little time away from our kids to, uh, to record this episode. But first, a word from our sponsor, Yukonuba Premium Performance Dog Food. Check them out. This is high quality, high grade dog food. You can't go wrong. Dakota 283, thank you Dakota 283. You make some great products. If you're looking for a watering system this summer, a watering and food combo, a new kennel, you name it. Dakota has you covered. Check them out at dakota283.com. And don't forget, please use my promo code TUR10. That's TUR10 for 10% off your order at dakota283.com. Okay, let's jump into the bonus episode. Enjoy. Start uh, Mrs. Upland Brits page. Definitely not. That won't be happening. (laughs) I I think people are dying to hear from you, though. They can hear it here now, or they can, you know, ask you questions for me. (laughs) So would you call this an exclusive interview? Yep. The only one I've done so far. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, if you haven't uh, caught the gist already, this is a bonus episode of the Upland Rookie Podcast. I thought it would be a ton of fun to jump on here with my wife, Kirsten, who you will get to hear from in a little bit. Um, We're just asking her some questions on being a... Uh, bird dog slash upland hunter's spouse. <laughs> We're kind of taking that angle. And also just to get to know her a little bit, we're going to ask some fun um, hunting terms and see how good her knowledge is. Oh, goodness. <laughs> on, on some hunting terms. And of course, we'll end every episode with a rapid fire question section. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But Kirsten, welcome to the Upland Rookie Podcast. Thank you for finally having me. <laughs> I mean, it took my people a while to contact your people mm-hmm. to get you on this episode. Yes. But we're glad it uh, worked out. Your contract was quite demanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, the price was pretty high, but our budget here at the Upland Rookie Podcast <laughs> is, you know, we, we spare no expense to get quality guests. So... Wow, that's awesome. (laughs) All right, why don't you uh, just introduce yourself, tell everyone who you are, and just tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Kirsten, Will's wife. Um, I am a mother. (laughs) How how many kids? Five children. Five kids. Um, We have a nine-year-old. I think you've probably heard from Will, but a seven-year-old, four-year-old, and then two... Um, 20 month old twins and so they definitely keep us busy we're gonna do a Um, rapid fire question actually right now okay who's your favorite twin no i i cannot answer that question um i love them both a hundred percent equally but we know who you love more right 
No, I uh, love them both a hundred percent equally. All right. Spoken like a true mother. Um, but we do try to get that information out of the kids often. Um, but <laughs> it changes every day. Yeah, it kind of changes. Um, probably the naughtiest twin. Um, or probably I should say the most behaved twin is the best twin that day, but that's true. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> well, awesome. Um, we're going to dive right in. Oh, we're going to start talking about dogs. Actually. I know dogs. Oh, wow. You, yeah. <laughs> you explain, explain your love slash hate relationship with dogs. Um, dogs are sweet. Dogs are cute. I really... As um, all bird dogs should be. Yep. I really do. Um, I think they're a great pet. But are they my favorite? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I, you know, when I don't have kids to watch over one day, maybe I'll have a closer bond and love for them than I do right now. Um, but yeah, yeah. They're fine. They're fine. Okay. Yeah. That's wow. That's actually more than I expected <laughs> yeah. you to say about dogs. Um, actually, on a more serious, maybe fun note, um, I should explain how I don't, people probably don't know this, but you actually, I think, were the primary one who picked out Gage from the litter. Yeah. You were, you were talking with the breeders quite a bit. And I would, at the point of when we were, it was time for us to pick. Um, I, I didn't have a strong preference on mm-hmm. either puppy yeah. and they were probably what, five or six weeks old, maybe at this time. So why don't yeah, you explain how you, how you younger him? than that? I don't know. I saw, well, who is Gage now? I saw him in the pictures and it was funny because as puppies, I think they all look exactly the same or very similar. Like there There's was so many differences. I mean, yeah, maybe, <laughs> but to me, there wasn't anything that was like, oh my goodness, he's so much cuter or he's going to be the best puppy or anything but there was just this like oh because he had a yellow collar and so I was like I want the yellow one and I just said that from the beginning and then there was one picture um, that they sent us with him and a baby cuddling and I think that was what sold me um, (laughs) in the end but I yeah Yeah, because I know when we went to visit um, you kept asking the breeders just about um, if a puppy's like gravitating towards one person, if that mm-hmm. made a difference. And I think, I think if I remember right, Gage was, he was kept coming by you. I do think, yeah. I, and he wasn't timid, you know, he really yeah. just, he enjoyed the cuddles. Some of the other ones would kind of shake in our arms. And so I, yeah, he just, he was a really sweet puppy. <laughs> So d- tell me about, or I guess tell everyone, because I already know all this, but tell everyone uh, about your dog growing up. You had, I think, two dogs growing up mm-hmm. at different times, but why don't you just, as a, a fun perspective, what did you grow up with? <laughs> Were you a more of a German Shepherd kind of girl, a bird or a bird dog, toy dog? I grew up next to next door to a German Shepherd oh. who bit multiple kids. I did not know that. Yeah, so... <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring no. up uh, any, any wounds. Um, no, I think they're good dogs probably generally but this particular one wasn't great and so no our family my mom didn't love dogs either um and so I begged my parents um at one point to get a schnoodle (laughs) so a schnauzer poodle mix freaking Kaya I know um and so that's what I grew up with these tiny little dogs who bark a lot um but they're they don't shed and so they're super I don't even know if I'd say cute, but they're <laughs> um, they're cute and little. I and, and Kaya's still alive, right? Yeah. Your little, your yeah, little Kaya. Yeah, I don't know exactly. We do not own her, by the way. No, this, we don't own her that, anymore. Her. I left her with my parents yeah. um, who love her and take care of her. Um, but that's what I grew up with. And then once you and I got married, I took on Bindi and Emma, which were our goldens. Oh, the sweet goldens. Yes, sweet goldens. And so I took those dogs on. Um, But the first dog that we actually, oh, well, we did, (laughs) you know, we had a Labradoodle for a short minute. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah, we won't talk about that dog. (laughs) Message me if you have questions. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> or better um, yet, message Kirsten, actually. <laughs> oh, goodness. You guys don't want to know what she would get into. Um, if you were married to me, would you have dogs? Um, if, you, if it was your choice. I know we've talked about this before, actually. In this stage of life, I probably would have zero dogs. <laughs> but they add so much joy and love and... yeah. They add so much. They complete our family, don't they? (laughs) Basically, the dogs are Will's favorite children, but um, (laughs) my favorite children are actually one of the five, you know, (laughs) all of the five kids we have. And so, why don't uh, why don't you talk a little bit about Bindi and Emma? You actually had a pretty sweet relationship with Emma, especially, wasn't it? Why don't you talk a little bit about her? Yeah, um, they were super sweet dogs. Um, Emma just followed me everywhere. Even when I was like in labor with Gracie, she just like was in tune and knew. And um, yeah, I I don't really know what it was, um, but we definitely did have a sweet bond. I think Bindi had bonded more to you, and so um, Emma kind of took me as her, own, you know, her own. And um, so yeah, yeah, I enjoyed those two and it was Emma actually how it's only been like maybe four years or something since she's passed oh yeah because she passed yeah, after she, we got gauge yeah oh wow so it wasn't terribly it wasn't long too long ago but she was a sweet dog she was great mm-hmm. she I, I loved Emma a lot um so it sounds like you're in a in a dog for you maybe in this stage of life even maybe it'll change over time but it sounds like the 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 house manners, the sweetness, the the relationship between you and the dog yes. is probably the most important. Yes. Is that fair? I want a dog that just doesn't eat food off the table, off the counters. I want a dog that just like lays on the ground and does nothing unless I tell them to. And um <laughs> and is really I mean, and thankfully, Gage and Gunnar are great with the kids. Um but yeah, I just, yeah, I think house manners are the most important to me for sure. You can tell I, I work more on bird manners <laughs> yes. probably than house manners. Mm-hmm. Uh, still a work in progress. Um, but Gage, why don't you tell everyone your kind of kind of daily routine with Gage right now? Um, he's kind of your helper in a way. Yeah. And honestly, this is probably the main reason I have a dog, I should say, <laughs> is um, every time at lunchtime he comes in or after lunch, I should say, and he cleans um, the floor for me. And so <laughs> so he's my first vacuum cleaner. And then I follow it up with a real one. But we definitely teamwork there. And he honestly, he is doing a lot better he doesn't jump up on the table usually unless like well, you, I tell him you to. You wonder why he jumps on the table <laughs> every well, day at, at 12 o'clock mountain time. He's <laughs> gets to come inside and clean he up He runs the and floor. he knows what he's doing. Exactly. He's a man on a mission. He knows his job. He knows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's a working dog. Yes. He's a working dog for that purpose. And But now you're trying to get me not to um, feed him. You don't want... Well, I don't want him to gain weight in the off season. I know, but he's on a he's on a good diet right now. Good food. This is one of my favorite parts he's, about him. He's looking <laughs> great, so I don't want to, him to eat hot dog and grilled cheese off the uh, floor I know, every day. But that's it's our special bond. So, sounds like we need to take this off air for <laughs> this, this <No>. conversation. <laughs> Um, all right, transitioning to a little bit of the the hunting side, um, why don't you share? Have you ever hunted? No. Do you have any desire to hunt? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, wow, I was not expecting that strong of a response. Actually, <laughs> I was expecting more of a um, no, maybe someday. I have, I have tried you. I have tried to get you to quote unquote hunt or or even shoot. Maybe the range. What to share? From your own perspective, your own feelings, what for you, what is it? Is it a you just don't want to have any interest? Is it a bad experience? Why don't you just share? No, there's no bad experience. Um, I think that you know, you and I, we've always been kind of opposite in a lot of things, which is good. Like, I think opposites attract, and so I think. And honestly, when we had first gotten married, I knew you were into hunting, but I didn't 
know how strongly you would turn into hunting. She, she didn't see the uh, addiction <laughs> yes, I didn't around the corner. see that that would happen. Um, but again, I'm not against it by any means. I love, you know, what you get from it and stuff. Um, and so I don't, I don't have any bad experiences with it. I just, I don't really have an interest. <laughs> Is it something you would ever just come along for? So say, you know, you and I went hunting for a day and you would, you know, just walk the field with Gage and I, um, get the kind of experience. Yeah, I actually, I do find it fascinating. Um, I just love the dogs, like natural instincts and I love like seeing those kick in. And I do find that fascinating. And so I think that that's something that I can see myself doing. But I don't see myself being the one to, you know, yeah, shoot the guns or... Um... Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but I like, yeah, I love being a part of experiences and stuff. And so I can't say I'll never go with you, but it's not something that I have an interest in doing. Yeah. Well, hey, that's fair enough. And honestly... There are times when, and I'm sure people out there can experience this or have or can relate to this as well. But there's times I'm out there that I get so mesmerized by watching the dogs work that there's times I'm like, I should just put the shotgun in the car. <laughs> if, if I'm out with maybe yeah. a couple other buddies, there are times that I think maybe I'll just get my phone out and take some pictures, you know, of the dog and just get to watch the dog work. And and so I think there is some beauty in that in watching. Um, watching those natural abilities come out with a dog, you know, using their nose, working a field. Uh, and well, and I think the first time that I was ever like, I ever saw that was when Gage was a puppy. And I just saw his like natural abilities come through. Even like our breeder at the time had like sent us pictures of them at a few weeks old, you know, and Gage pointing. And so I think that was the first time like my eyes were open to how cool dogs can be and um so it's definitely fascinating and so i enjoy um seeing that come through yeah that's awesome um why don't you talk a little bit about uh so being on the being the spouse Mm -hmm. of an upland hunter and someone who is crazy about their dogs being me uh why don't you just speak to like what is that experience like in in what also, what are some of the, maybe the challenges that come with that? Um, just being honest, there's there's times I'm I'm gone for a weekend hunting, or I get home from work, you know, see you and the kids, but then I'm you know roading the dog or working with them in the yard. Just in your own honest words, like what's that experience like, and what's maybe some advice you can even give to other spouses <laughs> of of guys like me uh, who who are just obsessed with this this passion? Advice to other spouses. Watch your bank account. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, guys, this podcast is over now. (laughs) Um, Let's be real. This was not on the approved question list that I sent her. (laughs) I actually didn't look over your question list. So I just wanted to wean it. So, well, you're doing doing great. Anyways, um, I think I. I honestly, um, I think it's really healthy in a marriage and a relationship to have each of our own hobbies, whatever that looks like. And so I think it's really cool that um, upland hunting is your hobby and as well as like now podcasting with it and everything that evolves from it. And so I really do think it's super cool. And I like that you enjoy it so much and are able to do it. Um, But, and I honestly... I don't really mind um, watching the kids at home or while you go and do that because I know that you'll get filled up and I think it's good for each of us to have those times to, you know, fill our own cups and then come back feeling like um, we can tackle anything and stuff. And so I think it's a healthy thing that you're able to do it. Um, (laughs) But yeah, the annoying side would definitely be like, oh, I think I need this. Oh my goodness, I think I need this. And, uh, you know, just like over and over and over yeah. again. And then it's like, yeah. oh, I'll be good. And then, oh my, look, that looks super cool. And so I so think... So what she's saying is she she doesn't love the the gear side of things that come with Absolutely hunting not. and dogs. And, and Will is now on a strict budget for a little <laughs> bit here, guys. So I'm basically on a spending freeze, guys. You're on, yeah. Oh, the ice cream truck. 
We got the ice cream truck going by. We are in our garage right now, and also our kids are banging down the door to the garage. <laughs> so if you hear that in the background, please forgive us. This is not a <laughs> sponsored episode of the podcast. This is a bonus episode, so don't send me hate mail. Um, no, that's awesome. Thank you for for sharing all that. Um, why? So, buddies of mine will ask me this. Why? You kind of answered this already, but how or why am I able to hunt as much as I do with having five kids? <laughs> like, how is it possible? Explain to everyone. Cause a lot of people will ask me, they'll message me or we're, we're out together and say, how can you do it? How do you, how are you able to hunt as much as you do and, and work your dogs with having five children? You want to touch on that a little bit? <laughs> I honestly do think that God like truly does give us each strengths. And one of like your strengths, <laughs> or I guess one of one of your <laughs> um, downfalls or something. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> can be, you know, in general, like your lack of patience at times. If you're like, let's say, around the kids nonstop for a long period of time, and so. I think, like, honestly, like, it's just good for you because you are more introverted than I am. Um, And so it's good for you to have that time by yourself um, or with buddies or, like, however that is. I think that is, like I said, I think it fills your cup. It makes you, um, like, you come home with just, you know, you're like, oh, I got to do what I love to do. And you come back filled up. And so I think that's huge for me. And I think that... um, One of my strengths, thankfully, is I do have, I think God has given me like more patience in a lot of ways. And so I really do kind of find it fun to like spend, you know, quality time with the kids, even just if it's just us sometimes. And so, and I'm more of like the person that's like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. And I'm that like, I don't know fun mom or something <laughs> yeah totally and so when you're I, out of town i, I, I mean I, I call on my way home and i'm like hey you know what'd you guys do and i'm just expecting oh we, we sat around didn't do too much and you're usually listing off of a whole bunch of things that you guys <laughs> accomplished or activities you went and did and so you guys or if it's just you know treating myself to starbucks eating out here and there <laughs> but i really do think that it's good for both of us in a lot of ways and um you know we've been married almost 10 years now so i think we've just found like for both of us to have like time however that looks to fill our cups like I think that's huge and like I said you're more introverted and so if you were around the kids 24 7 like I was I think that you would probably die I, 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 I'd lose my <laughs> shit that's for sure that's 100% um, true but no I really do in all seriousness I do think that it's really beneficial yeah. for you and for us so that's awesome well thank you <laughs> <laughs> um why don't you talk a little, I just popped in my mind describe our usual or a typical uh, phone conversation when I'm on my way home from a hunting trip. Oh, goodness. Yeah, just take it away. Well, it just depends. If I, if you call and you're like in a chipper mood, then I know that it went well. (laughs) If you're in like a, like a just down mood, then I'm like, oh no, here we go. Because then I have to That means I usually missed a bird or multiple birds. That means maybe my dogs weren't working as best as I wanted them to, or a host of other things. Yes. So we always pray that Will has success. <laughs> are, are you saying I can be a little moody? Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. Who's the moody hey, one in our relationship? We're going we're gonna to skip to the next uh, section here. <laughs> Who, no, but for real. Who do you oh, think the moodier one is? Oh, in? me, for sure. For sure. For sure. And he doesn't I'm, even have that time of the month. I'm a, <laughs> apparently, I don't know. I right back to Denver, I'm, but <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a little more high maintenance. Sometimes. Yes, and so yeah, sometimes the conversations are really you know fun, and I'm like, yay, he's gonna be in such a great mood when he gets home. And then other times, it's like, all right, guys, <laughs> <laughs> buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, we're we're gonna move on to um, this is actually your idea um, to talk. We're gonna go over some hunting terms, mm-hmm. okay? It's some terminology, some words. Well, just because I literally have no idea. Some phrases. 
um, related to either dog, dogs, dog training, hunting. So those are the categories these are in. So we're going we're gonna to read some of these off. Well, and how many do you have for I me? I was like, I don't know. 10 maybe? I want to know 12? how many I get right. Okay. Well, we'll we'll track it after the I podcast. I literally have no idea. Okay. Like, I haven't even... I think you'll do okay. Trust me. I think you'll do okay. All you've, right. you've heard... I hope you've heard me speak of a lot of these. So, if you need me to use anything in a sentence, let me know and I will give a little phrase or something. <laughs> All right. Okay? We'll start with an easy one. Pointing. Pointing. It's... <laughs> it's like a game show. <laughs> Pointing. It's when the dog sees a bird or smells a bird or like tracks onto their scent i should say keep, keep going and just like pauses you know they're kind of and they lift their little leg um that okay i know that dogs can point without lifting their legs but i truly do not believe things are a point unless they lift their leg you, so, you heard it here first everyone Gunner, i will say you know he did not start lifting his leg does he even lift his leg now, really? I, I haven't. I've seen it once, kind of. And like so I was like, leg take him top. back. He doesn't know what he's doing. Um, <laughs> but I know that they can do other things. I know that their back gets lower, you've told me, right? Or something. Keep maybe, going. Maybe, potentially. Sure. I don't know. I just, I just, when they track on to the scent, I should say. I love this conversation. <laughs> Is this accurate? No, you're Did doing, get it you're right? doing really good. It's, yep, when they... They catch scent of a bird and they point the bird. Okay. So good job. Very well done. Uh, steady. What is steady? That's or like steadiness? Steady. Like, whoa. Is that like the same? So if you're like Gage, whoa, and he just stops, is that So if, if I say my dog is really steady. He doesn't go after the bird until you tell him. Or you allow yeah. him? Yeah, we'll count that. He just it, stops. It's, it's, it's talking about the st- how steady the dog is to when the bird flushes. So some dogs are steady to the flush, meaning once the bird flushes or flies, the dog will chase after it. That's steady to flush or steady to the shot. The dog won't move until they hear a shot. Or totally steady is they won't move at all. So good job. That's, that's, awesome. That's awesome. Two you, for two or what are you, sure. you counting? We'll, we'll call it two for two. Uh, a broke dog. Oh, bro- a broke dog. What? A broke dog. Oh, man. This can be used in different ways. So, A dog that's poor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> a broke dog. A dog that... Oh, man. A broke dog. Like broken in. Like a dog that is like broken into hunting. Like a dog that... I might I might give you that one, kind of. It, it can be used as a, a similar term to steady. So he's, um, if you say, yeah, my dog's uh, broke to the shot or broke to the flush. What it's kind of a another, woke dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of another <laughs> another term uh, that you could use. Okay, good job. All right. Um, shot size. Shot size. Um, this is totally. Um, I'm just going to say it's the size of. The ammo. Wow, good, accurate. It's or? it's the size of the BBs inside the shell. All right. So you have your shell, and then you have your BBs. So it would be a shot size. Like, hey, what what uh, shot size are you using? Good job. Force fetch. All right, I do know this one um, because you have force fetched Gage, um, a dog who does not naturally retrieve and who you have to <laughs> teach to retrieve. Um, so I've definitely seen you force fetch Gage before. Well done. <laughs> there was one time I, I, I force fetched Gage on my workbench right outside of our garage oh my, door. Oh gosh! And I don't think you knew what i was doing just uh, yet i don't know what was happening and she comes out to the garage and gage is i have him on a chain from the ceiling just to keep him on the table and i just wanted to close the garage the door look, at that the point look on your face <laughs> i didn't want neighbors to see i will thought never you were abusing the dog or something <laughs> we'll never forget that look <laughs> yeah, um confusion. i think we talked about this one a little bit uh flush Flush. Oh man, I knew you'd probably ask this one, and I just feel this one is tricky. Um, flush the dog, like, or flush the bird. Sorry, right? So like, um, 
they track on to the bird. Um, they go past the bird. They go after I'm, the I'm bird. Gonna, I'm going to say you got this one wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you got this incorrect. <laughs> so flush is when the bird flies. The bird flushes and oh, flies. That makes sense. Takes, takes right. flight. Uh, along the same lines, what's a wild flush? A wild flush? A wild bird that flushes? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or a bird that's like uncontrollable. You have no way of like figuring but, out what they're doing. Kind of. A bird that would, you know, your, you or your dog aren't even up near it and the bird flushes out the end of the field. It's a wild flush. Okay. Good job. A check cord. A check cord. What is a check cord? I don't know. These orange cords you have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll say you got that correct. Yes, it's a long lead or a long leash. It's a good job. Um, ooh, I, I don't think. Well, we'll see. You have a biddable dog. A biddable? Biddable. Dog? You have a biddable dog. Oh, man. A dog that you can, you know, a Good dog. <laughs> yeah, a dog that yeah. people would very, like. Very trainable. Yeah. yeah good job. That would bid for it. Well done. <laughs> uh, what is a single? So let's say I call you on my way home and say I got a single today. You just got one. Good job. You know. Good job. It, it, it could, yep. It could also be if you if two birds flush and you shot one but not the other, you get a single. If you shot both, you'd get a Double. Nice. All right. A couple more here. Uh, stake your dog out. Put your dog on the chain. Dang. You're rolling, <laughs> girl. You're rolling. Uh, what is backing? Another dog is backing the other dog. So another dog sees you, your dog pointing and is basically like, hey, bud, I got you if you don't get this. All right, everyone. I am not coaching her. <laughs> I promise. She is getting a lot of these. Wow. I'm very impressed. What is a Bob White? A certain type of bird. What kind of bird? A bird. <laughs> a bird that's a little, white. A little quaalude? Yes, let's little, just low, say that. Low, low quail. Bob White quail. <laughs> uh, what does a limit mean? You only have a limit of birds that you can shoot there. Nice job. Way to go. Place. Um, what does it mean when I say my dog is birdie? Your dog is like Gunner, and your dog is like, I can't get my mouth off this bird. <laughs> <laughs> so no, birdie would be <laughs> you're, my... when you're in the field, um, uh, if the dog gets like, they're on the scent, they're close to locking the bird down okay. or pinning the bird in a, in a point. When you say, my dog's birdie, everyone better get your gun ready because the bird's about to pop oh, up. Oh, okay. So, yeah, good, good guess though. Um transitioning the gear just three gear questions and then we're gonna wrap this up what is when i say uh final rise what piece of gear is that your vest yes. she knows this well folks <laughs> crispy crispy sorry i said that first part weird crispy 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 what oh. are my what are my crispies oh i have no idea absolutely no idea my boots oh crispy nevadas last one what is my Franky instinct your what? My Franky fr instinct. My Franky instinct. Oh man, I. Oh, I have no idea. Take a guess. Um, your Franky This is for the instinct. win. Where can you give me a clue? Um, I'm taking my Franky instinct with me. No, I know, like, but like, give me a clue as to like what you would do with this. <laughs> <laughs> A I, water bowl? No. Um, nope. Here, give me another clue. Uh, it's something you, you have to have to upland hunt. A gun? Good job. Way to go. All right. <laughs> water bowl. I have not... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Well, the Dakota water bowl, I know that. Yeah, the the, the dash. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the Dakota dash, 3.5, yes, actually. And you unfortunately had to get yeti bowls for the dogs well of course i didn't know the dogs needed yetis hey these are <laughs> helps them hunt, uh helps them hunt better can i just before i go <laughs> <laughs> we got we got one more question <laughs> we'll go for it but i'll just say just so everyone knows this um and it's here oh boy um 
Will has at one point put our kids' vitamins on hold on Amazon, but has still gotten the dog's vitamins. And so <laughs> the dogs live in luxury here, guys, okay? It's it's true. Hey, these dogs work their butts off. And, and they need they need good supplements. <laughs> they need to stay hydrated. They need, you know, hip and joint support. You know, they they work hard. They don't live here for free. <laughs> Um, well, they kind of do. But um, last question, and uh, I guess a more serious note. Uh, from a sp- uh, spouse's perspective, again, um, you know, I try to ask this to everyone on the show. What's some advice that you would give um, maybe another spouse, let's say, um, who who their spouse is getting into upland hunting or maybe getting their first bird dog this year? What's something you would just pre-warn someone, encourage them? What? what piece of advice would you share with them? Yeah, I would say just, yeah, I think come along for the ride in the sense of, I think especially like with Gage, I was like super involved and with him as a puppy. And I think it was just so fun to like watch him grow and watch him develop and watch like his, you know, natural abilities come out. And so I think I would just like, encourage a spouse to be a part of that but then also I think encourage the spouse to um of course like whatever freedom they're comfortable with but just like give freedom to you know have that time away so your husband or whoever can come back refreshed in a sense and vice versa the husband definitely should be you know doing that for the spouse and for the you know their wives Um, but I would say definitely just like, like let them have fun with it and enjoy it. Um, and yeah, be a part of it in whatever way you feel comfortable. Um, for me, it's just more so watching. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I've enjoyed it. That's great. That's great. Thanks so much. Um, okay. Last section I always end with is some rapid fire questions. So just off the cuff. Give me your quick response to all these. Um, I might ask you a follow-up or two. We'll see. Um, but we'll wrap up right after this. If you could live in the burbs or the country, the, let me say the beautiful country. Burbs, 100%. I will never be moving to the country. I will not say exactly where I live because this is on a podcast, but I live in the like perfect place. I am literally five minutes from Target. I am never moving. Um, I live in gorgeous freaking Colorado so we have the mountains you live close enough to all these places so, so we're not moving to the country ever. we're never moving to the country guys we have turned our little ranch as we call it into um a, the country we have chickens we have pigeons that is this true is as close as you're getting I will one day when we you know can afford it I will get a horse and we will board oh. that horse somewhere. Oh. But I will never be moving to the country. I, I think I see my window of opportunity once we get a horse. Maybe, you know, maybe, no, maybe then. This, I'm, hey, the horse needs space the to burbs, run. The burbs, 100%. The, the dog can never, always start. Never. You know, that's my retirement plan. No, when he retires, you're welcome to start a kennel somewhere oh. else. But I am Ooh. living oh. here. So that means burbs. I have to go live there by myself? No, you just... <laughs> Find a piece of land where you go and work when you've retired. (laughs) All right. Next question. (laughs) Favorite dog breed besides the Brittany? Oh, my goodness. All right. I don't even know for sure their personalities, but the Bernie's Mountain Dog, right? Wow. I want a Bernie Doodle right now, or one day. They're so cute. Okay. And I only want one because they don't shed. If you you could see the look at my face right now. (laughs) Other than that's other than a Britney, of course. Okay, Be- wow, yeah. Be- I know. Sad sorry baby. about the screaming baby. We need to attend to him right now. Yes. Um, favorite or no beverage of choice? Starbucks what? frappuccino. I mean, I knew, I knew it. I otherwise, knew it. yeah, I don't know. Have you ever shot a firearm? Oh man. No, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. No, I'm I don't want people now. to think I'm not a professional, but... Well... <laughs> <laughs> I can defend myself if she I She can. To, okay? She can. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, what are... Oh, in your opinion, what are the top three pieces of gear you think an upland hunter needs? A gun. A dog. 
<laughs> um, and some boots. I what? Let's just yeah, we'll go. We'll go with it. Um, and then the last question: Have you what wild game have you actually tried and eaten? That is zero. I haven't tried. Not anything. true. Didn't what? you? Didn't you try some goose? Um, Back in Illinois. I don't. Th- I mean, maybe. I maybe pheasant or something. I think you. I think you tried goose. I don't think I tried goose. Maybe pheasant. Oh. I don't know. But okay. I will enjoy it from a distance. Um, but I like. I'll stick to my chicken. <laughs> Not my chickens. I will never well, eat my. Whoa! Chickens. What, what is this now? We're we're sacrificing Sunny <laughs> no. and uh, Pancake. Never will I eat my chickens. Those are the chickens' names. All right. Well, thank you. Um, as you can hear, we have a screaming yes, baby in the background. To we need to man. tend to the children. But thank you for being on. Thanks for, yeah, I actually thought this was going to be a lot shorter than it was. This turned into almost an hour oh episode. Wow. Fun talking with you. I will see you inside. All right. See you soon. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right. That's a wrap for the bonus episode. I am still... Uh, chuckling to myself, I was I was listening back to a little bit of the audio from that episode. Um, Kirsten, thank you. Um, I really thought it would be a fun perspective. Um, so many of these podcasts and articles and all this social media content is always from our perspective, the hunter's perspective, the dog trainer's perspective, whatever it might be. Well, I thought it'd be fun to kind of flip the table, peek behind the curtain and say, hey, what is it like from the spouse's perspective? We never get to hear from the spouse of an upland hunter. Um, So I thought it was really fun um, just to to hear some of my wife's thoughts on that. um, And I hope you enjoyed the, the conversation as well. Well, remember, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. Or not iTunes. Does anyone use iTunes anymore? I'm not sure. Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called. Um, you know it'll help uh, get, help get the show out to more hunters just like you. Um, also, share it with your friend. Don't forget to tag us in your stories or a social media post. Um, I will definitely be reposting those. Um, so, so don't be shy. Um, share these episodes. Get it out to more people. Um, I think that's all I got. Until next week, uh, we'll have a regular episode coming out on Tuesday morning. So until then, do something with your dogs this week to help get them ready for the season. Take care.